Other one, this is ring announcer Thomas Triber. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has arrived for Inside Boxing Weekly. So here are your hosts, Mike Goodpaster, John Einreinhofer, and Jeremiah Pricer on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Inside Boxing Daily on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. Inside Boxing Daily is brought to you by the Retired Boxers Foundation. Make sure you go check out Alex Ramos and Jackie Richardson on Facebook with the, with the Retired Boxers Foundation. I am your host, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I'd like to welcome in my co-host. First up, Jeremiah Pricer. How you doing, Jeremiah? Oh, I'm good, man. Whenever we're talking about boxing, I'm doing all right, so let's get this ball rolling. All right, and next up will be John Einreinhofer, president of the Tyson Fury. Oh, wait, the Deontay Wilder fan club. How you doing today, Tyson? Or, I almost called you Tyson, John. Yeah, see, see I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that much of a front runner, Mike. I didn't, I didn't change positions that quickly, even after last night. But uh, good to <clears> be here to extend, extend the boxing weekend. Though I, I do respect uh, uh, the performance of Tyson Fury, of course. All right, um, I want to tell everybody, if you're listening, I know this is last second, but you can blame Jeremiah for that. But if you want to call in, the phone number is 812-496-0852. Once again, 812-496-0852. You go to Twitter, find us at Grueling Truth, which will give you the phone number there. All right, what's your big takeaway from this fight, Jeremiah? Well, my big takeaway is that Tyson Fury is the your operator to Deontay Wilder. I mean, there was a, you know, I mean, I thought he won going away in the first fight and now he goes forward and gets an even more conclusive results. Doesn't, you know, doesn't leave it in the judge's hands. Uh, I mean, to me, it just appears as if Fury is just too much. And to me, I think it's clear that Fury is the number one heavyweight in the world. He's the heavyweight champion. And I, and I think that concept in itself needs to be embraced because, you know, as much as people are giving ESPN crap for you know, their their incessant use of uh, lineal heavyweight champion, again, I, to me, whether you disagree with his claim beforehand, whether you agree with it, 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 it wasn't a big deal to me because I was just happy that the fact that people were talking about it. Obviously, it was it was you know largely brought into play as a marketing ploy, but the fact again that it's historical, it dates back over a hundred years. The fact that people were even talking about it was, was a damn good thing, and, and, I, and I'm happy with the result. I mean, we had as I as I noted in my my article that I just put out, you know, analyzing the data, it was a grandiose event, and the result coincided. With with all the buildup and everything to it, I, I, I'm happy with the result. All right, John. Uh, you know, I think Tyson Fury. It, it was a scenario that I wasn't saying definitely was going to happen, but it was a scenario I saw as a possibility as I talked about it, where Tyson Fury backed Wilder straight up. You know, Fury came in at 273, Wilder at 231. Uh, you know, we we can get into it later, but you know. Fury's performance was very impressive. Like Jeremiah said, he's the champion. He's clearly the number one guy now. But I, I think both guys might very well have been too heavy, coming too heavy. And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on. They're both making a lot of money. There's a lot of distractions. Even though it played out so well for Fury, I, I don't think it's impossible that both of them weren't in the best possible shape. But that played in, in Fury's favor because. Wilder being outweighed by 42 pounds, just stood there. He back, he went straight back. He just tried to load up on the right hand. He didn't, he didn't listen to Breland about throwing the jab. He didn't try to move at all like he did in the first of Ernst's fight. Because whenever, frankly, he has fought over, you know, approximately 220 pounds, he ha he hasn't looked that great. So, you know, you never got to see if if Wilder would have been moving. You know, if that 273, 
as long as Wilder didn't overmove, what would have affected Fury later on because Fury got Wilder completely beat up and worn out. I also thought the stoppage was good. I thought Wilder, you know, was getting beat beaten up. He showed a lot of heart, but I, I was getting concerned for him. It, it, he he wasn't looking good uh, after that first knockdown. There was something wrong with him. You know, he was holding on to the ropes and the blood coming out of his ear. You know, Tyson Fury's six nine. He's got two inches on him. You know, he's got forty two pounds on him. Uh, you know, it, it was it was a good stoppage at that point. Um, you know, we can, we'll get into it. I, I do think there's some things Wilder could do differently if he's in better shape. He could have done last night if he was in better shape. But, you know, that's that's on him. And uh, he and Fury both put on extra weight. And last night he went in Fury's favor. But I would make an argument today, as good as Fury's performance was, and he looked good, and I'm not taking anything away from him, when you really think about it, did Fury really need to weigh 273 for that performance? Couldn't he weigh 255, 258? and done the same thing I, I think he could have so you know that's that's since there's a third fight in the rematch uh, and there there's a rematch clause for a third fight if i would were wilder i'd exercise it and shoot the dice but uh you know we might be seeing it again that's why we're talking about these things jeremiah do you think we see it again uh i mean i i think i think that's tough i mean because internally it's hard to tell exactly what's going on for deontay wilder uh, internally for somebody like Shelly Finkel and, uh, you know, Al Heyman and some of the other guys over at PBC, it makes a lot of financial sense. I mean, uh, you, you know, how much better can Deontay Wilder get at 34 years old? He just, to me, he just kind of is what he is at this point. Uh, you know, so it's like you cash him out now. Or do you risk cashing him out later? Maybe he is a different guy because of this. I mean, historically, I think we all know that, that big punchers like this, you know, t- are altered. You know, even, even who was it? Stephen Edwards, I thought, made a great point on Twitter today where he said that everything is going to be harder for Deontay Wilder from here on out, even if he's not that, uh, even if he's not adversely affected by this result because now that his opponents see somebody go out there and do it, they're going to be a little bit tougher. They're going to be a little bit better prepared again, because they, they saw the result. It's kind of like once that aura is stripped away, it, it's just, again, it, it's harder sledding from here on out. And so, so to me, it's like, because he's not going to get any better, it seems to make sense financially that you just get him in there again, whether he loses, whether he wins, you're still, you know, collecting a big payday either way. But of course, with Deontay Wilder, it's really about him. How does he feel? You know, does he feel like he needs to regroup? Does he think he can learn a few things here and there? You know, personally, I, you know, I don't think he can do much different, uh, you know, big or little. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't think he's, he's going to improve that much. He might be slightly quicker. I, I, I don't know. It just seems like financially it makes too much sense not to do it. But from Wilder's, you know, perspective, I, I don't know. If it was me taking that beating and then having a dude sing, sing Don McLean afterwards in front of the world, that would be tough to internalize. So uh, for him, I don't know. I I, I just I, I think he's going to lose either way. So I guess you might as well go fo- forward with it. Personally, I'd rather not see it. I thought Fury won twice. But again, it's contractually obligated if if that's the route that Wilder wants to take. Yeah, and I want to apologize for the people who tried to call in because, Jeremiah, it's not working. Um, I, I would say this, though, John. Don't you think it, if he wants to fight Fury and win, is the best thing to take the fight right away? Or is it maybe take a fight that. in between and try to get his confidence back, maybe? I thought about that hard last night and this morning because you know it is interesting to kind of ponder these things and, and what these these guys do have to make these decisions and their teams do here's the i thought about that too here's the conclusion i came and i've convinced myself more than ever that he needs to do it now and there's a few reasons first which we all three of us actually agree uh you know the guy's 34 i think even at heavyweights you know you, you lose something especially when you get to the wrong side of 35 you look at any fighter and, and even though heavyweights last longer it, it definitely happens with all of them so the re it's really where the contract then comes into me apparently from the credible reports i keith eidick had some of this and then coppinger had it out this morning um you know at least these guys you do usually get some information um especially eidick but they 
but cop, they say that the contract says that if Wild, there's no dispute that Wilder's got 30 days to exercise the rematch clause, which I think he should do. Then apparently once he exercises it, the contract states that the rematch has to take place in August, but that it is negotiable, that both sides can agree to move the date slightly later. So what I would do is exercise it within the 30 days, and then I agree that I think you should go right into it, but I don't think – I think August is a little too quick. I'd be looking at September or October if I were him so he can rest, heal up, then get back into camp with a strategy and work on it and do both but not fight anybody else in between. I don't think you should do that. And I think the thing that people might not be looking at that could benefit them is, remember, Tyson Fury, you know, beat Vladimir Klitschko. It was a boring fight, but, you know, he, he got the win. Um, he became the champion. He, he had a, a contractual rematch clause with Klitschko that he, you know, violated and didn't fulfill. And then by his testimony, went on a drinking and cocaine binge and didn't fight for a couple of years. Now, obviously, the fight wouldn't take place there, but I'm thinking, you know, you think of situations like Leonard Duran, too. If Wilder says now, I want it, you know, Wilder's got all the motivation on his side now. Fury's going to be getting all kinds of accolades. He's got all kinds of money. Uh, you know, he's had a problem with it before. He, he got away with weighing 273 this time and dominated Wilder basically once he heard him in the third round. I mean, that was, that was pretty much it. Uh, the first two rounds, I don't think, were really all that dramatic. But uh, what I'm thinking is he's thinking in his mind, hey, I, I weighed 273 and I dominated this guy. I'm getting all the accolades. He's certainly not going to be motivated to get in better shape. I mean, he, he might come in 280 the next time. Now, what I think would be really difficult is if Wilder gets in really good shape and he's at 219 and Fury's at 280, there's such a big weight discrepancy. It's, it's hard to hold off a guy that big, you know, o over 12 rounds. And, and I really think he's going to it'd be tough for him to knock out a guy that big even with his power at this point um you know he, he'd just have to tire move around some tire him out then then try to hit him more with his right hand later on in the fight if fury gassed out more but i i think he should do it along those lines there's no guarantee that he's going to be successful or i'm going to guarantee it but i think he's probably got a bit more of a shot if he does it this year than people think yeah. but I think he's got to delay the delay the date of the fight a little bit, which he apparently can do under the contract, like go October or something like that. Not not August. I wouldn't do August. But my question is this: Why would anybody want to see this again? I would rather see Tyson Fury fight somebody where there's a chance that he could lose. Yeah, I mean, I I think you know there's going to be some problems with the marketing. I, I think that Wilder will have a shot. I think they can build it up, but. You know, casual fans don't go with the undercard stuff, but they don't know that much of the history of these two guys anyway. So I don't know if maybe there's a way they can sell it to. We, we don't we don't know if they got casual fans. We haven't seen the numbers yet, but assuming that this promotion was successful enough that there were a few casuals mixed in, if they're just going for the hardcores, there's going to be some tough sell. But you know, with I think with the hardcores, these guys are these guys are interesting enough, entertaining enough. They might be able to come around, but it's a rare instance that they usually never do it nowadays. But this really might be one where you got to have a good, like, co heavyweight co feature on the undercard. Um, because obviously, we all know, all three of us, I'm not crazy about the idea even myself, but you know they're going to go pay per view with what they're paying these guys. So, and it's a Fox ESPN collaboration. So there's, there's not going to be any hope they take it off pay per view. And that will be somewhat of, of a difficult sell, maybe it may be a, a, a very difficult sell because it's also their third fight. But I, it, some of it might be able to be overcome, but this might be one that they've really got to have a decent co-feature. I don't think – I think it would be running a pretty big risk to run an under – for the hardcore fans to run an undercard like you just had if they're going to have a third fight. Jeremiah, do you need to see this again? Well, no, I don't. I mean, uh, I thought Fury – again, I you know – pretty much the way I started my analysis for the show is that I thought he won going away. I thought he won going forward. I mean, is it inconceivable that Fury or, you know, that Wilder could win a third fight? No, I don't think so. But, uh, you know, I mean, even if Fury balloons up, who knows? I mean, again, it's a possibility. I mean, I don't think you can be certain of a whole lot in boxing, but it just feels like 
you know, as long as we've been debating who's the number one heavyweight of this generation, it just feels like it's it's time to move on. I mean, Anthony Joshua got upset because, you know, he's sitting there waiting. You there, Jeremiah? Uh, you know, when he had a tick up. It just feels like, for me, I want more clarity in the division. Again, to me, Tyson Fury, and to many people, including John, including you, Tyson Fury is the heavyweight champion of the world. But so long as Anthony Joshua is lingering about, there's still some question in a lot of people's minds. You know, a lot of people take the alphabet belt soup, the alphabet soup uh, organization serious enough to wear you know, it won't be good enough until Tyson Fury collects all of the trinkets, you know, wears them in a glove, kind of like Thanos in, in the Marvel movies. I mean, it, it, it's like there's enough of a question that it needs to be resolved. And how long have we been talking about this? It feels like almost half a decade or so now, you know, that we've been waiting for it. And, and again, I, you know, I would love to see it in the summer, kind of like, uh, you know, Eddie Hearn throughout. We, we know that's not going to happen. Um, you know, so what, I, I mean, if, if regardless, I guess, I don't think we're going to get a big, you know, Fury Joshua showdown this year anyways. So I guess they got to put it on for a year. And in the absence, what do we do? Do we have a, a third fight with Wilder again, which I don't need to see, but what are then the options? Probably, um, Jarrell Miller. Uh, somebody like that uh, again. So it's like, would I rather see Darrell Miller? Billion White. I don't know. There, there's well, options yeah. there. They, they and, sign Revis. Yeah. They sign Revis, but you do Revis. Yes. You don't really want. Yeah, you don't really want to see those. I mean, but either. that's, that's more that's competitive than Deontay Wilder against him. Nah, they're they're not. They're not. And they're I, not. I think that. Jesus. No, they're not. We watched but, 20 you know, or 19 rounds where Deontay Wilder landed two punches, knocked him down, he got back up, and he lost every other round. And last night, we watched first, him beat him half to death. The first, the first, you know, the first fight was a draw, and Fury got dropped sure it twice was. hard. And they, and they were, and they were hard. They were hard knockdowns. They weren't oh, flash yeah. knockdowns. And now, that'll prove that he know, can't Fury, be knocked out by Wilder. But you know, Fury, Fury dominated the. You know, Fury did dominate the fight last night. Um, there's no, there's no doubt about it. Um, but you know, what, what, here's, here's the thing that I think that really, I mean, look, as a boxing fan, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, with the, the rematch in the contract, I'm okay seeing it again. I mean, but just being fair in an ideal world, uh, you know, if, if Joshua and Fury were going to get up next and then Wilder was going to have to fight the winner after that or something. Okay. But, but I think what people aren't looking at, despite his statement this morning or last night, is we know that doesn't matter much. And, I, and I'm saying this in all fairness, just observing the guy's business model. Do, do you, I mean, and you guys can answer my question what you think, honestly. I mean, do you really think Eddie Hearn – and I, it's just the way he does business. Do you really think Eddie Hearn really wants to have Anthony Joshua fight, you know, Tyson Fury next, maybe in the United States? I mean, Fury's made a big name here now. Uh, he's put the work in, in fairness to Fury. He's built himself up over here. Why shouldn't he capitalize on that? You know, even though the fight's big in the UK, that doesn't make it as big worldwide. If Fury goes over to the UK and, and fights Joshua, um, you know, if, if he has it here, you know, in Vegas, you know, Lennox Lewis fought, all, fought here, you know, for, for, for years and years. Um, but getting back to my point, does, does Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn's MO, the way I see it from the outside, and, and I've seen it enough that I think I've got it down now, and he's, him and his matchmakers are good at picking opponents for it. It's you, you get a British guy an alphabet belt, and then you, you just have them defend against guys that are semi credible that you know you can beat in, in the UK, and, and keep saying we're a world champion. I mean, he, he he looked like the happiest man in the world when Joshua got that decision over Ruiz and got those alphabet belts back at, after that second fight. I the guy was about crying. I mean, that that just shows me, you know, because. He wanted his train got derailed when he thought he had an easy win over Ruiz to try to, you know, appease the zone and have Joshua fight over here, and, and it, it upset his apple cart. I mean, Polov's up next. You know, he, he's just going to run. He's just going to have Joshua defending those alphabet belts. I don't. I don't think he wants Tyson Fury to be 
a part of that. I mean, I don't, what, what are you guys thinking? I, I would I say think... this, and I'll just direct this to Jerry Lamb with another question. Right now, you have to be an absolute flaming idiot to think that Tyson Fury is not the heavyweight champion of the world, which I think devalues Anthony Joshua's fights, especially since it's two guys that are British. And if Eddie Hearn waits to make this fight, I mean, Joshua could lose again. We've already seen it once. So I would think that maybe there's a better chance now that we get this fight. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, maybe. I mean, it's always tough to say what's going on in a guy's mind because, you know, we've seen that. We, we talked about with that with, with Aram for years about how, you know, he'll he'll – let these fights mill kind of like, uh, you know, Juan Manuel Lopez. And there, there are plenty of other examples. No need to, you know, rehash some of our old material. But, it, you know, and then Aram seems, acts like he has a change of heart where like, hey, I'm going to get. Yeah, I think he's got, I think he's got eddie hearn's model peg right now but you know it's like it's still like there's still lingering doubt in my mind like as well does he really want it but then again we have to acknowledge all the political bodies involved I mean, this top rank really wants anthony joshua right now i actually think both of them probably don't want it immediately i bet top rank would love to have tyson fury fight a couple of times here stateside maybe against an American like Jarrell Miller in, in Madison Square Garden, and then, you, you know, maybe get the fight next year. In, uh, you, you know, and then, and then you know, they're all making big bucks. I mean, that's going to be a huge event. Granted, they all keep winning. But part of me, I, I just don't think any of them want it right now. All right. Um, I think we've got a caller on. Hamed, are you there? Yeah, hello, Mike. Uh, all right, Hamed, what was your take on the fight last night? Oh, uh, I, I don't know how any of could say we need to see that fight again because I saw Fury pretty handily beat him and we got to look at it like this. Fury was three stone heavier than Wilder and Wilder's always been a one-trick pony. He's been effective at it, let's get it right. He's, he's got a way in this era. I think in any other era, it wouldn't work, but if it works, I mean, if it's not broke, why... Why you don't have to fix it? So, but against Fury, the elite guy, I just don't think he could beat him. Uh, on his worst night, he could have beat him for eleven rounds. I thought he was made to look silly. Uh, don't get me wrong, that fight was a lot more competitive than this fight. But in this fight, he got bullied, he got battered from pillar to post. Uh, I just think Fury's got his number, and I, I, I think a lot of people criticize Joshua online and. They say he's protected, but Walda, I don't think he faced the puncher, and I said it before, and he, he was evident on the night. And I know he's every boxing, and Fury had about three stone advantage, but Fury's not a known puncher. If that was a guy in there who could actually punch, like I think AJ or Klitschko, or someone who leveled Walda's power, they would have taken him out in that third or fourth round when he when they dropped uh, when Fury dropped Walda. I personally think a rematch is not a good idea. He's already fought him twice, and he's come up short, really, uh, in both of those fights. So I think Fury and Joshua need to fight. Whether or not that can happen right now, probably not. I think AJ will fight Pulev in May or June or whatever. I I would like to see Fury fight Dylan White, because I think he deserves a title shot. Why? Why? Why, why do you think Dylan White deserves a title shot over Anthony Joshua? Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't think that. But if he's fighting Pulev in May, Fury can't sit around from February to But hold on a second, June. Hamed. Hold on. Why would Anthony <laughs> Joshua not want to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world? Uh, that's that's a good question. I mean, Because he uh, doesn't who... want any of, as they say online on some of those groups, he doesn't want that I don't smoke. Agree because that. Time Fierce, Tyson Fury will beat Anthony Joshua's ass. Oh, I I agree. I think Fury's a heavy favorite, uh, clearly, but that's the best fight to make. But see if they can, because um, AJ fought in December, Fury fought in February. That's the schedule thing that I personally think. If Fury, if AJ is willing to, and his team are willing to, you know, 
be what's the word uh, inactive for even more months because that feudy fight probably won't happen if it does till about September October because feudy is going to take about four or five months off then if they want to do the gamble do it but I personally don't think that would be a good move I, I don't mind if they have one more fight I just hope that fight happens sooner rather than later I don't want to wait next year or the year after like that I don't want that to happen because I personally think Josh was not good enough to remain unbeaten or win even against guys like Pule, Vusek, I wouldn't rule any of those guys to beat him. And I really think Dilla White and Fury is not a bad fight. I'd rather see that than the rematch between Wilder and Fury because Wilder still got the option of doing a third fight. Uh, I, I don't want to see that. I think Wilder shouldn't be advised to take that fight. I think Water has to take the fight because if he doesn't, if he fights anybody halfway decent, he'll get beat. John? Well, I don't think he necessarily will, but but he's going to have tr- he'll have trouble getting up for it. it. It'll delay him to you know maybe you know he might not get Fury again. I mean, you want to get the crack at the real title, or you know you don't want to be fighting him, you know, while you're getting on the wrong side of 35. I think I think he's got to I think he's got to exercise the rematch clause. They've got to figure out. How they can market it, maybe one, at least one good undercard fight, and then just picking up with the marketing that they had here. And and Wilder's got to come in in much better shape, and he's got to hope that Fury weighs as much as he did this time, or even more. But that's not going to make it easy. I mean, I agree that it's not one of these things where I'm going to guarantee a Wilder victory or something in that situation. You know, he's going to have to fight differently. It's going to have to be more like when he fought Stavern the first time and he, and he moves around some. And he, even though Wilder doesn't have the combination punching offensive abilities, a lot of, the, of, of some of these past greats, I think the idea, though, like I'm mentioning about Fury's you know, weight and how big he is, and, and that is a problem. Actually. You've got to look at fights like Holyfield Bow 2, uh, Spinks against Combs twice and Cooney. Even Tommy Morrison fighting the old George Foreman and then and then stepping around him, boxing him. Yeah, but Deontay you know, Wilder cannot do what Tommy Morrison did because he's nowhere near as good as Tommy Morrison. He can he can he is capable no, of doing not. those those kind of a thing. He's now, never he's beaten be anybody. Punching. He'd be fucking he's Luis Ortiz, gonna... who's like fifty years old and he lost most of the rounds he, in those he, fights. He, he, he had, he had a draw with Fury, who is the champion. He no, he didn't. He did not have a draw with Fury. I'm so sick of hearing that shit, John. If you watch the fight and he open your it. eyes, it was 8-4 at best. Mike Judge, the judge from the UK. Phil I don't Sporting give a Sporting shit Sport. if the judge was from was Tyson Fury's Fury, hometown. Though. I'm not blind. I can Fury. watch a fight. That was really coming I mean, off a two-year layoff. Who hadn't yeah. fought a live body since he fought Klitschko, so... I, do, I think but, if you're seeing if you're seeing as a draw at best, you're being given him every benefit of the doubt. Like last night, that was the big fight, his biggest fight. Unless we really barely went around. Wilder can't fight back enough, but he's got he's got a very good jab, but he's completely abandoned that. And I think he's lucky well, Mark Whelan pulled him out because he could have got seriously hurt. That was a very no, good the stoppage. Sto- I, I, the stoppage was good and. He does have a good jab, but he he, he didn't use it. He, he didn't listen to Breland. He wasn't in the shape he should have been. And there's no doubt he can't fight backing straight up. And you, you don't you don't stand even he's believing in his power too much. Where you don't you don't stand. He's he's reading the press clippings himself too much. You don't you don't stand right in front of a guy that's 40 pounds heavier and six nine two inches taller and just just stand there no matter what kind of power you have. You know, he's got. If he, I'd be the first to tell you, if he fights the same way, or if he comes in at two thirty again, he's just, he is just going to get knocked out again. It's going to be up to him and you know his camp, and and he's going to have to he's going to have to listen to Breland, and and if he's not going to listen to Breland, then he's got to bring in somebody else, and you know he's going to have to he's going to have to he's not going to be it doesn't mean he's going to be as good of a boxer as Fury, but he's got to box more. Even frankly, some of those wild explosions he has could be effective if he was moving around, did a wild explosion like that, and then, then moved out, you know, moved, moved out. Yeah, to but the a side, wild explosion out. only works against somebody who's an inferior boxer. I mean, hell, the only reason he hit Fury was because Fury had been out of ring two and a half years, wasn't really ready to go yet, Wilder was at his best, and still, in the best-case scenario, you can draw up, 
is it was a draw. They fight 14 months later when Fury's ready to fight, and it's a one-sided ass-beating, and it looked like, you know, it looked like a 27-year-old man beating up a 5-year-old boy, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> Wilder wasn't prepared well this time. Now, remember, he Wilder wasn't prepared well this time. He weighed... Oh, uh, I, I, you can't Wait a second. Him, Hold on. If Wilder's not prepared, Wilder said he was gaining weight because that's the game plan he had. I don't give a damn. So are you telling me Gennady Golovkin, if he came in at 160 like Gennady Golovkin, he definitely won the fight. That's horseshit. I mean, the dude's just technically, he doesn't do anything better than Tyson Fury. But I'm he, sorry. He, Go he, ahead, he Jeremiah. Do, Jeremiah. He, he, he can do better than speed. he's done. Go ahead, Jeremiah. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. I I get what John is saying, and, you know, nothing, you know, in boxing to me is outside the realm of possibility. But it, to me, if Wilder comes in at 215, something like that, I, I just, I really don't think, I, I think the Bermain, Bermain Stiverne example, where I boxed him in the first fight, yeah, I mean, Wilder looked better in that fight, but it's also Bermain Stiverne. I mean, who sucks? Fury is naturally more athletic than Wilder is, and it seems like look, even at even at two seventy three, uh, Fury's footwork is better than Wilder's at at really any rate. I think. I mean, I just don't think there's there's much, if any, gap that Wilder can close to make it an even money fight. I, mean, I just think you know Fury's shown his superiority. I don't really want to see it, but get it on the flip side. Again, I, I don't really see a much different result. It might be, you know, kind of like, uh, uh, you, you know, one of these fights where they, somebody has stopped somebody and then in the rematch they find a way to go a few more rounds. Maybe that is the case. But I also think that it wouldn't take much for Fury to just bludgeon him again. I just, I really don't think Wilder's foot movement, his coordination, his jab, uh, I, I just don't think it, his, his boxing IQ, it's not good to overcome somebody who's just smarter, faster, quicker, more nuanced, and that has now the big mental edge over him in the sense that he's knocked him out and beat him up almost the entire way in doing so. So, I, again, I don't want to see the fight. But again, I, I do understand John's point. Like, hey, this might be the only chance you have and redeeming yourself, so you might as well take it. And it sucks because boxing is so bogged down with politics that we probably will get it. You know, even though well, the vast majority of us, I think, want the Joshua fight, uh, we might have to play the win again as we have for years and years. Well, I can tell you this. I think it would be awesome to watch Deontay Wilder get his ass whipped again. So I will watch it and I will pay for it. But Hamed, John, any comments? Well, I think that you know, I I, what, I I actually agree with a lot of what Jeremiah is saying. You know, you know, it, it, what what I'm saying Wilder needs to do. It, it's not going to be an easy task, but I think, again, even though the guy the fighters are different, just just to get you some ideas of examples, though, you know, we're we're a, we're a smaller. I mean, we're a heavyweight. Remember, I don't I don't like to boxing's got your tradition. I like the way they do it, but remember, UFC's got a weight limit of 265 at heavyweight. Fury wouldn't even be allowed to fight in the UFC. He would well, he'd he'd probably weigh 265 if he had to, John. Right, but but I'm just saying the point being that you know he, he's actually over what the commissions, you know, when they had the agreement on the unified MMA rules allowed heavyweight to be. Well, if the MMA. weight was that big a deal, Jarrell Miller would be able to be heavyweight champion. But it, it's the thing is, it's like Jeremiah said, it's the weight and then, you know, Fury, I'm, I'm even with what I'm suggesting, I'm not saying – that Fury, uh, that Wilder is going to be a, a better boxer skill, you know, or, or a better combination puncher than Fury. But remember, Fury got dropped by Steve Cunningham, who's not even a good cruiserweight puncher. Uh, you know, that wasn't wasn't from any layoff or anything like that. So you know, he, he could be hurt. He can be nailed with the right hand. Wilder can him with heavyweight. Well, Wilder got dropped by Harold Scunia, so that that I think is a flawed logic. Though. I know people use it all the time. Yeah, I said but that one is cheating yeah, but, as well. But, like but you can hurt. But but he can. But the point is, he, that's not the only reason Fury got knocked down, though. Is that he was laid. He, he laid off. I mean, you know, Wilder has. You know, any guy he's he's ever faced, he's at least stopped him or dropped him. So you know, but he's a puncher. He They're be... two different. I, I, I sorry to agree. I just want to see this. Fury fought Steve Cunningham. 
And what was the other guy? Um, Pajic, I can't remember the first name. He fought those guys completely different. When he's on his A game and he boxes the Klitschko and Wilders, the likes of those guys. And when he fights Joshua, we'll see as well. He He's in a different league to these guys. And these guys are supposedly some of the best heavyweights right now. So I just don't think Wilders is that good. Fundamentally, but, but think- very flawed. I think another thing you got to look at, and this is where I think in, if in a third fight Wilder's got to look at, if he follows the, the game plan and gets and gets it into the later rounds, you know, Fury came on very strong in the second half of the fight against Varlin, and he fought him in the second half of that fight like he fought Wilder. But remember in the 12th round against Varlin, and Varlin's got no experience and had been in with absolutely nobody before that, Valin was taking it to Fury in the 12th round. Fury was completely gassed. And Fury was a lot heavier against Wilder last night than he was against Valin. So if you can get him into the later rounds at those high weights, he did have a bad kick Fury as work well. where you're not yeah. getting where you're not getting attacked. Now Wilder can't do what he did last night. You can't have Fury pushing you straight back, leaning all over you. You're fighting him. You're wrestling him all night. You're going to lose every time like that. You, you can't do it because he's going to wear you out. Yeah. You, know, you can't let him just keep How about this, on, though, John? It's hard, it's hard to wear a guy down when you don't throw any punches at all, which is Deontay Wilder's M.O. I mean, he's got a jab that sometimes looks all right. But other than that, he doesn't throw any punches. Hell, he didn't throw any well, punches I, against Luis Ortiz. So you can't wear well, a guy well, down if he doesn't have to you know, get hit. No, I, I I agree with that. I mean, you 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 know, an example of that would be then Andy Ruiz in the second fight with Joshua. You know, Joshua came in in great shape and he was able to move for twelve rounds, which is tough to do at that weight. But he got his weight down fifteen pounds. He was able to move around for twelve rounds. But it's like you said, Mike, because Ruiz just wasn't doing anything in that fight. He wasn't putting any pressure on him. And I agree with you, Wilder. With what I'm suggesting, when he's moving around, Fury. Yeah, he, he's got a punch. You know, he, he's got to throw the one-two. Even even those crazy-looking explosions, he's got to offer some of those and then move away. He, he can't just be standing there well, and thinking you this, I'm going to land the bomb. Well, let me ask you this. If Wilder has to fight like that where he's moving around and he's throwing all these punches, what, what makes you think he could fight 12 rounds like that? I agree with you. I think that that is one of the biggest challenges he would have with what he has to do. I actually agree with that because – just the mental pressure. That's why I say, you know, moving in and out some, in other words, he's got to, he can't be just on his bicycle for 12 where he's just moving the whole time. He, with the pressure fury would put on him, he would wear out. So it's gotta be, you know, he, he's moving around, you know, that, then, you know, he stops at an angle, you know, land, land him shots, moves around at another angle, doesn't go straight back. Doesn't, you know, just get tied up real briefly. Doesn't let, Fury wrestle him in the corner or lean on him. It's, it's a very tiring fight for him too, but that's why he can't be at 231. He's got to be at you know 220 ish or lower and then not get leaned on because Fury is fast for a big man, and that's why Wilder he, he has to at least be comparable in speed. He can't he can't be putting on that extra weight and, and lose those kind of advantages, and then he's got to put himself in a situation where he's got a stamina advantage late in the fight which is not an automatic with fury but if fury is heavy and he's in better shape and he can punch him along the way like you said mike i agree you can't just be standing there weighing 219 it's not going to work uh you know he's got he's got to throw more punches he he didn't he didn't do it last night well i can tell you this i i thought last night jeremiah fury at 273 actually looked less flabby than he did when he fought wilder the last time I don't think the weight's that big a deal here. We're talking about a guy that's almost seven feet tall. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't think it matters much, honestly. I mean, you know, maybe Fury gets, you know, bigger and slower and whatnot. Maybe. But I just I, I just think because Wilder, he may be smaller, but he's, he's just not technically sound. I mean, while he's moving, he's a guy who really needs to have his feet set before he throws punches. Uh, again, it's just... It just doesn't seem to me as if there's it matters much what the weight disparity is. I mean, if if Wilder chooses to go down to 215 and Fury chooses to go down to 250, 255, whatever it may be, it, it, to me it's just the same story. I mean, in, in the game plan that John is talking about, yeah, it sounds ideal, 
you know, maybe it works. But Wilder, to me, does not have the ring intelligence to implement something as complex as that. He just hasn't shown me that. I mean, when he needs, in this fight, when he needs a, a, a plan B, he, he doesn't have it. He, I mean, you know, once you, and Mike, you've called this for years. I mean, once somebody backed him up, took away his best weapon, made him in fight, he was inept. I, I mean, it was it was a piss poor performance. And again, I just even if Fury is too heavy, you know, I still think there's that element of mental pressure that's just probably too big for it's just too big a hurdle for a while to overcome. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. What, what, you know, like it, it, I, maybe we we get something crazy, and then what? Like imagining a scenario where Deontay Wilder wins. What then? We need a fourth fight. Uh, I mean, it would do big, you know, numbers again, and whatnot. But to me, it just feels like a delay in yeah, what we really need. How about this, Jeremiah or John or Hamed? Anybody think of this? Uh, but where we've seen two fights, and the second fight was such an ass whooping. Have we even seen a third fight in a scenario similar to this? We we don't need to see a third fight. Let's no, be but real. Have we ever seen media. in history no, a third fight remember. like that? I can't remember. Yeah. That's the, the, well, the you thing got Lamada, got... you know, Lamada fought Robinson. Yeah, yeah but those were time. different times. Those guys were just trying to get though, paid yeah. so they could pay their rent. Yeah, uh, boxing is different. No then. There, there was no ass whooping. In, in, I mean, there wasn't an ass whooping until, you know. Well, like the, the ass sixth, whooping was the last fight, the sixth fight, and then they didn't have a seventh. Right, I'm trying to think. But those I, are yeah, two old time. Good question of history. You try to think. Those of, were like, hey, Hamed, you're fights. gonna have to be quiet, or we're gonna hang up on you because you're one of the young guys here. So you gotta let the old <laughs> folks talk now. Because John was ringside for Lamont Robinson. He was 55 then. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I was not there. I gotta take the Al Bernstein line. Yeah, I was not ringside for Lamont Robinson. To five. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I, you know, I, it is, I always like try to think of those scenarios, too. It's actually kind of fun to compare. Yeah, has there ever been a third fight where the second fight was, yeah, where, where a guy got knocked out and, and then there was a third fight? I'm trying to. A heavyweight, that's the thing. I can't think of it. I can't think of it. Of it division, really. The thing, the thing, though, I don't understand, like, people are going on about Fury's weight. Though. If he's heavier, then Wilder should have been more competitive. And Wilder was... Uh, I think in the first fight there was a bigger weight advantage. I know it's only about two or three pounds, but this fight was not remotely competitive. Well, and it, the studio it, it is heavier. can't be because I've been trying to explain this to John and Jeremiah for five well, years. Well, Mainly well, Jeremiah but, well, or John well, is the, what? It's a little bit back, different in history, but I, I think it is a good. I, I think this is still again the fighters are different, the abilities, but it, it's still worth looking at. It's and, not and, worth know, looking let's, let's at because a... you have one man with no ability who's not even a decent fighter against another man who has a ton of ability who may be better than what any of us ever thought. And I told you, John, five years ago, as soon as somebody goes right after his ass with his little chicken legs and his lack of footwork and his, fans be, or his feet being side by side, that he was going to get his ass owned. And he got his ass owned last night. But, but he's like, okay, but let's look at Let's look at the first. Let's look at the first Holyfield Bo fight when Holyfield got dropped late in the fight. You know, Bo was a big puncher, much bigger guy. You know, Bo's everybody so was kind of like everybody was kind of it was, but I mean, everybody was kind of saying, "Well, you know, we love Holyfield. He gave it. He gave it his best shot." But you know, Bo's Bo's too big. You know, what's he what's he gonna do? And he then, didn't you know, get an immediate, he, he immediate rematch get, either. But what he did get, he was able to get a manual. He was able to get a manual steward in his corner. Yeah, but you're talking about Evander Holyfield, who pound for pound is one of the greatest boxers that ever lived. Yeah, We're talking Wilder, about Deontay Wilder, who is but, just well, shitty. He looked but like Michael show, Grant. He got, he, got, he got a manual. It's funny though because this is a manual steward again, because Holyfield didn't have a manual steward for the first fight. He got him for the second. A manual steward came up with a game plan. He beat Bo. He dropped him for money for the, for the third fight, and he got knocked out by Bo in the third fight, even though he dropped him. But you know, they came up with a you know they came up with a game plan. Yeah, steroids. And he was able to get the win the second. <laughs> you know, I mean, if right. you see the difference at Holyfield from the first fight to the second fight, it was steroids. It wasn't Emmanuel Stewart, and I love yeah. Amanda Holyfield. <laughs> but you know what? 
I don't mind that he did steroids because I always get my money's worth then. But from the first fight to the second fight, it was steroids. The fight plan is basically the same. And the other thing is this. Riddick Bo also weighed in almost 30 pounds more than he did in the first fight. But there was a third fight because both fights were highly competitive. Right. But, but both those guys fight, were better well, than Wilder and Fury. They were, but, but Holyfield, but but Holyfield did change his game plan in the second in the second fight. He he was he was doing some he was doing some different things, giving giving Bo some different looks. He wasn't just yes, doing the quite. But this is the thing, Evander like Holyfield is an all-time great fighter who had done all-time great things by the time he got to that point. Deontay Wilder is a fighter who's basically fought nobody to this point. And now he can't box as well. Lost. That's the major. He can't box at all. He can't box. It's just, it's, just, it's just an example when you gotta you gotta make some of those adjustments when it wasn't when it wasn't looking good, and you know it's it's possible to make some some of the adjustments. John, you that, see that something was... in Wilder. I don't think even Mark Breland sees his Wilder. Like I, I, I think, think you Wilder's see wife that doesn't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it, it's not. It's it's the idea of, of what where 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 he can adjust. Remember, he had he had a, he had a draw with the guy the first. Oh, he practice. could. Oh, if you're trying to say that he could be a bit more competitive, yeah, possibly. But but he didn't fight a you're draw about... with him the first time either, and ninety percent of the general <laughs> public knows that, John. He could no, maybe win example, a more wrong move. Now, an example of what you guys are talking about that I think would actually be a good example where you give it your best shot, it doesn't work, would be when Frazier fought Foreman the second time and he tried to move around him, give him angles, and he was able to hang in there, you know, for five, going into the fifth round in the second fight, but, you know, then Foreman was able to unload on him again and and the result ended up being the You know what I think he could do, the adjustment he could make to really have a chance this fight? I, I, I can't think of anything. I would say that if he took a gun in with him, he would have a good shot. <laughs> well, he's got that in his right, he's got that in his right hand, so he's got that. He does. Well, yeah, he's got a B pop gun. He's got a bullshit gun. I mean, come on, the dude don't hit nothing like a George Foreman. He never knocked anybody out. Who did he knock out? Luis Ortiz, whose claim to fame was the I beat Bryant Jennings. I mean, this is the thing. Everybody talks about, oh, he's got this great punch. You know, it's kind of like looking at a home run hitter today in baseball. They're also not facing near to competition because you got so many extra teams now. Half your home runs are hit off guys that wouldn't even been in the major leagues when Mickey Mantle or Babe Ruth played. So, once again, the only fighter that he fought that could take his shot was Tyson Fury. He could not knock Tyson Fury out. He knocked him down twice. Big freaking deal. Ronaldo Snipes knocked down Larry Holmes. It doesn't mean Ronaldo Snipes was a great fighter. It means he got lucky and landed a punch. And then Larry Holmes got up and beat his ass. And this is the same thing that happened here last night. You know, he got well, lucky. He, he knocked hey, Fury was, down twice. Went, and then he never won another round. round. Uh, every, every, guy, every guy he's ever fought, he's either stopped or dropped. So, so you know, that would be like me saying, fight. you know, that's like me going to a school with the blind and I knock every one of them out and I say, well, I got a big ass punch because, you know, I just knocked every kid out in my class. Yeah. But nobody wants to bring up the fact those kids couldn't see the punch coming. Uh, you gotta, I mean, you gotta, can I say this? Uh, can I just he's say gonna this? Have to do more. He's going to have to do more than that. That's the thing. He's going to have to do more than that, especially in a guy that, that that's as big as Fury. Okay, once got, again, he has no he has skill. skill. He can't throw a combination. He doesn't throw a body punch. And who was it on this show on Thursday night said, if Tyson Fury goes to his body, he will knock him out between the seventh and the ninth round. And he John put him down Sparky, with a body shot. Could you, imagine, could you imagine if Jerry Cooney or Tommy Morrison hit him with a big left hook to the body? Deontay Wilder would probably cry <laughs> and piss his pants. The problem is Jerry Cooney would have to take a shot before then, so he'd be gone. <laughs> that's Why? That's, whoa, whoa, it's... whoa. So Jerry Cooney couldn't take a punch? No, he couldn't. He couldn't. So he fought Larry Holmes for 13 rounds. And didn't go anywhere. They and stopped dro- him when he was falling in, around. Got dropped in the. Got dropped. Dude, you're comparing Jerry Cooney to Deontay the Wilder. Fight. Jerry Cooney won five New York State Golden Gloves when it mattered. And if you watch him fight, he. I mean, he knocked out Ken Norton in a round. It was an older Norton, but it was a Norton. It was still ranked number six in the world. 
and that that Ken Norton would have beat Luis Ortiz. It, it was a Norton ass. that had a draw. Had, had had a had a draw with Scott Ledoux when he was out on his. Yeah, it is also a Norton out. who, right before that, had beaten Tex Cobb, who beat Michael Dokes the first time they fought, but he got screwed out of the decision, and they called it a draw. Yeah, but but you know the, the Tex Cobb Norton had. Wait a Norton second. I, all I can tell you is this: if you want to rip on Jerry Cooney and say he can't take a punch. In June of 1982, if you'd have put Deontay Wilder in the ring with Larry Holmes, he'd have been curled up in a fetal position by the middle of the second round. <laughs> well, that's fighting Larry Holmes, but, you know, Jerry Cooney got knocked out by Michael Spinks. Oh, you know, dude, light, you mean light. Hall of okay. Fame Michael Spinks, the greatest light heavyweight puncher of all time? And Jerry was drunk, so you probably got to throw that in there, too. <laughs> yeah, he, he was after Spinks hit, hit him with those comments. No, he was he drunk out, before the ridiculous. fight. He was an alcoholic by then, John. <laughs> I mean, that's known. I mean, I, when I interviewed him, he said that right after that Cooney or Holmes loss, he was pretty much done because he went to drinking and all that crap. So, you know, Jerry Cooney accomplished more in 23 fights than Deontay Wilder has done his whole life. Wouldn't That's a no brain. That. Why wouldn't you I say think... that? Did you really think that Bermain Stavern could have beat up Jerry Cooney? <laughs> Bermain Stavern couldn't beat up my mom. <laughs> Wild Wilder Wilder dropped Fury twice, had a had a draw with him. That's so a, Doug Jones dropped Muhammad Jerry Ali. Cooney does that mean I mean, does that mean he's one of the greatest punchers of all time? Or Sonny Banks yeah, dropped Muhammad I... Ali. That means he's one of the greatest I'm... punchers of all time. I'm... I'm just saying it's bigger heights than Jerry Cooney ever ascended to. Really? I don't think it is, John, because Jerry Cooney, everybody in the world knew who Jerry Cooney was in 1982, and his fight with Larry Holmes was much bigger than what happened last night. No doubt about that. But that's okay, so subject. don't tell me that Deontay Wilder reached bigger heights. He was even more protected than Jerry Cooney. At least I'm, I'm Jerry Cooney fought it. Ken Norton race. before he fought for the title. He didn't fight... Uh, Malik Scott, who laid down without even getting hit. This whole thing is a charade. It's all hype. They wanted an American champion who was big and bad, and he could knock people out with one punch. But in the end, it was all a charade. It was all bullshit. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a charade, but I don't pay, I don't, but I don't pay any attention to the. I don't pay any attention to the alphabet belt stuff. So, you know, uh, Wilder never. Wilder never. Wilder never. I don't think never, he's better than Michael Grant. Never, never think he's I don't okay, think Deontay okay, well, Wilder's better than my ass. Um, Jeremiah, okay. would you like to add anything to this conversation that is highly intellectual? <laughs> right, break, break it up, guys. Break it up. Yeah. No, what I was going to say is, in regard to the alphabet stuff, you know, at least I think, you know, one point where we can all get along here is that we're, we're awfully happy that, I, well, at least I am, that uh, we don't have to hear these comparisons to Muhammad Ali and then he's 10 consecutive Jeez. times and all that ten, other nonsense. 10. He was, he was yeah, about was to tough. tie Muhammad Ali if he'd have won yesterday. <laughs> oh, no. He could, no, because no, remember, wow, what, it wasn't it Wilder had 10, and Ali had 10 in his, I believe it was, it was his second ring, right? So Ali had nine to begin with, 10 in his second reign, and this fight allegedly was for Deontay Wilder to break that 10 mark and get into the 11. I mean, I, I, I'm happy as hell that I don't have to hear those comparisons anymore. I understand they're trying to sell a fight. I get it. But it, it, it just it, it makes everything so convoluted, hard to discern, you know, a lot of bloated achievements. But, I mean, honestly, I mean, John, obviously, he's a Wilder fan. I get it. But when I look at a bunch of guys, how many guys in history do you put against Wilder's opposition and they have – you know, a nearly identical record. You know, the the t two top ten, ten guys he fights, you know, other than Fury, Stavern, and Ortiz, I reckon there's a good number of dudes who could m not necessarily mimic that, but get close to that mark with that level you of You know who Stavern always reminded me of, Jeremiah? My lunch lady in high school, because she had that bun on the back of her head like that. Stavern does the same thing. <laughs> Well, one thing, one thing we grant is, you know, Wilder, I, I, I like Wilder. I, you know, I think he's better than, than you guys do. But with that said, I, I'm totally against the alphabet uh, belt stuff. I think modern fans don't seem to want to accept, which I can accept this and still like a fighter. I don't get why others can't. In other words, I didn't need Wilder to be a pretend champion 
to, you know, like the fighter and think he had some some uh, talents. I mean, you know, like Jeremiah said, this, this nonsense about, you know, tying Muhammad Ali in defenses. I mean, you know, Fury's the champ. Joshua's not the champ. Wilder's not the champ. Wilder hasn't been the champ. But, it, it, you know, I, I like Wilder, but I got to say, it's kind of like, frankly, with, with like some some of the, the some of the Golovkin fans. Like in other words, Wilder, you know, Fury was the lineal champ, and then if you thought he lost it, still it was. I don't think taken. that's the same. Now that Wilder, no. Wilder had a shot at him, and you know he had a draw. You know he dropped him twice, but he but he didn't get a win, and now he got him again, and he got stopped. And you know, some, not everybody gets to be the champion. You know, Golovkin was sometimes arguably sports. the champion. You had Canelo fighting that catchweight at uh, 155. You had him, Cotto, and Sergio Martinez fighting that catchweight. Yeah. Uh, Nobody Golovkin wanted to held fight Triple G. Not yeah, even that little that pussy division. from Mexico who waited until Triple G was too old. Now won't fight him again. He's going to wait till he gets even older and claim that nobody will fight him. So he's going to fight Billy but Joe Saunders. It, it, it's, it's still a lot. That, that's the way. But that's the way life goes sometimes. Yeah, he got, but he, got you'll, he didn't, you'll get, get, it, he didn't get it done. What? He didn't get it done. He, he, get it done. he kicked his win. ass in the first fight. The second uh, fight was you can, close. You can, win, you, you can win by a knockout. He, he, didn't, he didn't get it done. I mean, You, you can know, win by a knockout. Saying. So Canelo didn't deserve to win either because he didn't win by a but, knockout, John. But, but, you know, why didn't Canelo fight him three years before him fighting Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in a mere freaking con? Because Canelo was scared to death of him, and he still is. That's why he don't fight him now. Because he may yeah. beat him again. But he's going to take a little bit of pain with it. Canelo's a puss. That's the way it is. He went up, he fought Kovalev in a fixed fight. He fought Rocky Fielding. Come on. Rocky Fielding. This is a joke, John. Yeah, don't don't even compare. I Don't compare Gennady Golovkin to, to Deontay Wilder ever. No, because there, that's is, there is comparison. So no, no, there isn't. Wilder Wilder when there's one, when the there's, when there, when, 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 when there's one, when there's one champ, when there's one champ in each division, some, sometimes when there's one real champ, you fall short. When there's not a million weight classes and there's not a million champions. Well, this That's is the thing. Really this true. is the thing. Uh, when you fight at a weight class, and the middleweight champion of the world refuses to fight in that weight class for two years. That's an issue. When you're going down to fight Amir Khan and then going up to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Yeah, when you got a guy who won't defend a title for almost two years, it makes it hard to do anything. And especially because he was taking easy fights, which I would think, since you're against the, against the alphabets, you would be against people ducking people too. No, but but see, I'm I'm against you. You know, you, it's not that you you get the good guy award. We give you a championship belt and say you made a bunch of defenses. You know, because that's we, what they did with Canelo, though. Otherwise. He got the good guy that's, award. I mean, they let him fight Miguel that, Cotto you know, at 154 I, for the middleweight I mean, that's, title. That's not the way it goes. I mean, Wilder Wilder didn't have 12 defenses, and Golovkin doesn't have a bunch of middleweight title defenses. Golovkin I never said never he did, John. I just said he was a hell of a lot better than Canelo Alvarez, which is why Alvarez would never fight him. You've never heard me claim that Canelo had a, or that Triple G had a bunch of title defenses, just like you'll never hear me claim that Canelo was ever the middleweight champion because he fought at 154. Because can I, you know, say, can I say this though? Too big of a pussy to fight uh, at one six. Go ahead, Hamed. If you don't have a, a lineal champion, and you got say someone like Triple G, the rank number one, why isn't he the champion of the division? Like, I think people mix the whole lineage, which I think is just now getting overrated. Like, uh, a couple of years ago, Fury, I think, wasn't. Uh, you could argue the lineal champion because he wasn't fighting. And then you had AJ, Wilder, Parker, the top three, whatever. One guy's got three of the four belts, arguably is number one. Like, you could argue he was the best fighter. I know him and Wilder didn't fight, so we didn't get to settle that. But, like, right now you got Joshua and Fury. The winner of that fight, I think, is clearly the number one guy. There's still questions. Fury is number one, in my opinion. And he's There's a lineal no, how champion. How can there be questions, Hamed? Number one just fought number uh, two. Uh, I think Joshua is probably better than Wild. I still think that. There's wait a second. Though. Wait, wait, wait. You can't give me that shit. Because I watched Andy Ruiz, who wasn't even ranked by anybody that matters in the top ten, knock the shit right. out of Anthony Joshua. So right there, <laughs> yes. Anthony what Joshua. The and I hate, John, I hate to defend Deontay Wilder here. But Deontay Wilder, no matter what you say, lost to Luis Ortiz. And I think most people a year and a half ago, if you'd have said, who would you rather fight, Luis Ortiz or Andy Ruiz? 
And it rhymes. They're going to take Andy Ruiz. And Andy Ruiz beat the hell out of Joshua. Then Joshua gets yeah. in shape and runs like a bitch. <laughs> I mean, Andy Ruiz wasn't ranked by anybody credible when he fought Joshua. Yeah, but Joshua has beaten guys. The world has beaten no one. You, if Josh, I know, look, you could argue that Joshua wasn't ranked as the top two guys. I, I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying... He was a better fighter. He had a better resume than Wilder. He's a better fighter. He got box, and he's beaten better guys. He's beaten Klitschko, Povetkin, and Parker. I know these are some of the not the greatest wins. I still think Fury's head and shoulders above the rest. But I thought Wilder was highly overrated, and his resume was thin as ice, and he got exposed. Like I still want to see the top two guys fight. I personally think we Fury just is saw the, the best top two guys fight. Top two right now. Oh, right. the top, top two, two right now? Things. Well, that would be like, Adam oh. Konatsky and Tyson Fury. <laughs> no, I just, I'm just playing. Why well, wouldn't it be Andy saying... Ruiz? Because look at it like this. Ruiz fought Joshua. They fought twice. Who fared better in those two meetings when you combine them? Um, one guy knocked the other guy out. Yeah. The other guy won virtually 12 rounds. I don't know. It, uh, yeah. one was 12 rounds by so. running in circles. I would rather put it like this. If I would not say you, you can't Ahmed, run in the ring. Huh? I don't think you can run in the ring. Oh, I think you can when the guy you're fighting had too many tacos and weighs 300 pounds. <laughs> I mean, but it's really just a problem to cut the ring off. I, I get the, the thing. I get the, what was it? Yeah. All right. We'll uh, just all agree knowledge. to agree that I'm right. All right. Jeremiah has to be going. So, <laughs> so we're going to have to wrap the show up. John, do you have any final words? Uh, no, I think, we, I think we've got it all covered. It's just I, I, I see everybody's point in, in it uh, where you, you, in an ideal world, it might not be next. But, I mean, as the contract stands, I think Wilder's got to – because this, this news should be coming up in the next week or two. You know, he should exercise the rematch clause. There's going to be certainly no guarantee he's going to win or it's going to work out well, but it's the best move for him to do, and and he he should do it and let the chips fall where they may. My final words will be this. When you're 34 years old and you just took an ass whipping like that and you got that much money, the best move is to retire. That's that's a good that's a good idea. I think he shouldn't go. I mean, this is like you know an NFL player, John, that retires when he's 28 or 29, and everybody questions it. Sometimes you're just better to cut your losses, take your money, and go live the rest of your life with millions of dollars and a wife who obviously can't keep her shirt all the way on. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll never, que- I'll never question any any boxer that wants to retire for retiring. It's too tough of a sport. Yeah, because what I saw last night, Jeremiah, and I'll let you have the last word, is a guy who, if that fight continues, that could have ended really, really badly. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think that a lot of people. I mean, you gotta give Wilder some credit. Oh, I give him you know, a ton of credit. Tough. I give him a ton of credit yeah, for the I mean, toughness because that's the one thing I didn't think he had, but it's one thing he definitely has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he hung in there. He was taking a beating. He wasn't doing a whole lot, but you know, just round after round, he kept taking a pummeling, and he he took it. And he, you know, when Breland stopped it, I felt as if you know Wilder's. Uh, protest was half-hearted. He, he knew that the end was near. Yeah, he, he was right there feeling the full effect of Fury's punches. He knew that, you know, the end was not. So credit to him for being tough. I actually thought uh, the other trainer for a while that was, was being dumb, saying that, you know, he, he would have let it go on for a little while. Again, I, I know that Wilder has big power, uh, you know, and maybe he had the he power beaten done, out of him, though. But did you see exactly. his legs? His legs were all his, over the place. Legs were bad. Well, ever after the knockdown, uh, it, it was pretty much over. His legs were bad. Uh, you could just see it. You know, it was like waves washing across. You know, on a shore, just round after round. He hey, did you all, well, Jeremiah? Did you hear him after the fight when they asked him about the stoppage? And he said that he wishes they would let him go out and fight Clarissa Shields next. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, he never uh, yeah. <laughs> what it was about that or he wanted to go out on his shield? I don't remember which one. I think Clarissa Shields could take him though. Yeah, but I hey, credit, credit to Wilder too. Credit credit to Wilder too because in the post in the post fight interview, uh, you know he he did make some excuses and say you know I'm not going to make excuses, but he was pretty generous. He did say the better man won tonight. 
Uh, you know, and I got to give him credit for that. So I don't want to see a third fight. I want them to move on, but credit where credit is due. All right, guys, we are going to go ahead and wrap the show up. Jeremiah, are we going to start doing our 11 o'clock at night every night again? So Hamed quits harassing us about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I was going to see what he Matt gets what bored when Ken- he's up late at night. <laughs> what about Kenny Bayless? Did any of you guys he think sucked. that? I thought that was a bad performance. He was terrible. And I called that Thursday night too, Jeremiah, because that, that was a bad performance. It was real bad. I, put it like Last this. Last time the judges. I, I'll yeah, tell the you judges. this. And, John, my big thing with Kenny Bayless is you got a, you got two men that big in the ring fighting each other. You need a bigger referee. I was looking at that. You know, it's tough when when you got, you know, guys are getting so big nowadays. That did cross my mind during the fight. I mean, you got one guy 273, the other guy, you know, 6'9", the other guy 6'7", 231, you know, and and Fury's strategy, you know, which expected he might do, and he executed well, but he's trying to lean on him, tire him out, you know, get into those wrestling matches. And that's that's hard for any referee that's going to come in and be able to break these guys up. I mean, some of these referees are older, and uh, it's definitely something that, that's a tough assignment. All but right, the guys, point deduction gonna... was – sorry, Ma, I just, yeah, the, the point, point deduction, deduction was very was bad, bad timing. But I think it was bad on both sides. And he stared at water waiting to stop it from about the fourth round on from what I saw. So I don't think there was any fix in there. And the judges, unlike the first fight, all got it right, John. And they were all from the good old United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the fight, the fight ended up being stopped. You know, however it got stopped, it got stopped when it should have. I mean, I, I was getting worried, like, you know, about Wilder myself. I mean, it, it just, you know, it, the guy had, it, had he was, he showed heart. But, you know, the cor- that was a good time for the for where your corner's got to look out for him. He's got blood coming out of his ear. You know, his, his mouth, I mean, uh, he didn't look right after the first knockdown. You know, he had to hang on to the ropes. But he was in there still trying, hanging in there. He definitely wasn't going to quit. He wasn't even looking to quit. But, you know, it just wasn't It wasn't going to work out. It wasn't going to work out well. That was one that wasn't going to work out well at that point. And, you know, he's got a rematch clause. So, uh, you know, go come back and exercise the rematch clause and try to have a better night. Do we call that a trilogy or a rematch? I don't, I don't know how that works. It would be a trilogy because it would be the third fight. All right, I want to apologize to everybody who tried to call in and we couldn't answer. This used to work. Jeremiah's going to have to figure it out, Jeremiah, because we've gotten like 12 calls um, and it wouldn't let me merge any of them. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, though, because Jeremiah is going to a dinner party with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the benefit you have of being on the, uh, on the West in the West. I didn't mean to make fun of you there, Jeremiah. But we're going to go ahead and wrap the show up. So, remember, you can hear us anywhere you find podcasts, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find the grilling truth. So, for our guest, Hamed, John Einreinhofer, Jeremiah Pricer, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to the grilling truth, where the legends speak.